Hello and welcome to the second video where we're talking about cutting and this one's going to be more specific on my personal cut that I've been doing for the last 15 weeks. Now if this doesn't make any sense to you guys, watch the previous video, okay, that just goes over the basics of cutting and I also have a lot of other videos that deal with massing, nutrition, etc. Uh, so we're going to dive into what I did personally, okay, and then before we get into this video, one, like the dang video, subscribe to the channel. So as we get into this, all right, I just wanna put the disclaimer out there. This is what works for me. Now, will it work for you? I don't know, okay? But it's a great base. There's some things you can probably learn. You can use the principles that I've used for my own journey and implement them with your numbers, okay? So, Coach Joe's cut, the length, right off the bat, 15 weeks, all right? It's a great uh, time for me. I, I, I said in the other video, anything over 12 weeks is a good place. The longer the cut, uh, the, the slower and steadier we can progressively lose weight, which is gonna one, maintain as much muscle mass as possible, and two, it's been shown to just deliver uh, better looking physiques overall than more drastic and severe cuts. Okay, it kinda lets you also mentally, uh, for me personally, get into the cut a little bit easier, knowing that I have 15 weeks, uh, and I can kind of break it up into stages versus knowing that I have eight weeks to get as shredded as possible, uh, which is probably gonna be too drastic, a little bit too extreme, uh, and mentally it's gonna be tough, okay? So it also doesn't give you as much wiggle room if something goes wrong uh, to correct and adjust that. So 15 weeks, uh, for me, I have five weeks left, and basically following the same protocol I have been for the next couple of weeks, and then I'm gonna do just a quick a little peak uh, just by manipulating some water and sodium, uh, mainly just to show the before and after pictures and just use that for marketing content, if we're just being honest. So I wanna show the, the, uh, the, the great transformation that I've made over the last 15 weeks, and then I'm gonna head into kind of like a rebound period where I get to introduce more calories back into my system. My body will kind of absorb that, soak it up, uh, and then I'm probably gonna take an active rest period for one to two weeks and then go back into strength training as I prepare for some strongman competitions. But uh, the reason I was cutting is uh, I put in a lot of work. I put in a 20 week prep uh, for strength training. Uh, and then at the end of that prep, I just was feeling like I wanted to switch it up. My body needed a little bit of a break. Mentally, I needed a little bit of a break. I had some aches and pains from all the strength training. Uh, so it's just a good time. It was also summertime. So I wanted to look good for summer and that's kind of my arbitrary goal and reason for why I did what I did, all right? So getting right into the macros, guys. So if you didn't know what macros are, they're comprised of your protein, carbs, and fats, okay, versus micronutrients, which are gonna be vitamins and minerals. Uh, so macros equal calories, okay? And when it comes down to cutting, we just need to be in some sort of caloric deficit uh, to create weight loss. So there needs to just be an energy balance uh, in a deficit and we will lose weight. So the way I did this is I broke it up into high and low. And before we get into it, I'm gonna just give a quick shout out to Dr. Mike from RP Strength. He has helped me with this journey. I run all my ideas through him. He gives me feedback and kind of helps me out with this stuff, okay? Uh, so shout out to him, RP. They're, they're great people, great company, great products. Uh, but a lot of this has been learned through him and his guidance, okay? And we've done other videos in the past together, which you can watch. Um, we have a great relationship. Love the guy, he's been a great mentor to me. Uh, so. High days and low days. On the high days, my protein is gonna be 300 grams of protein. We're gonna do 500 grams of carbs and 50 grams of fat. Now in the past, typically, I've kept my fats a little bit higher and I just wanted to change it up. And by changing it up, it allowed me to have more carbs uh, and I just had to drop those fats. In the beginning, it was actually challenging for me to stay under 50 grams of fat, but I'll get to some things down here that had helped. But right away, I kinda knew that that was a problem and I was getting all these little extra fats that were creeping in that I, I didn't necessarily think about, uh, but it was it was tough. But I made some adjustments and keeping it under 50 grams or 50 grams is the highest has been a lot more manageable. And I do like getting more carbs and especially with uh, the hypertrophy work, okay? The main energy that we're gonna be using is gonna be carbohydrates. So I like to have those more and utilize them uh, for what their intended purpose should be. Now in the low days, 300 grams of protein, 300 grams of carbs, and 50 grams of fat. So the fat stays the same, but the carbs drop. And there's four calories per gram of carbohydrate. So we're at about an 800 calorie uh, difference just by reducing the carbs by 200 grams on the low day, all right? And the reason high and low comes into play is what I have explained over here. So over the course of 15 weeks, 
The way I did it is I started off with five high days and then two low days. So I, I used the high macros for five days out of the week. And then I did two lower days, that which ultimately, if this was maintenance, if I had all seven days to be high days, just putting myself in two low days is gonna put me in that deficit. So what I had done from there is then weighed myself three to five times per week and took my average weight uh, for the week. And if it was trending down, I didn't change anything, okay? We kept doing that. Now, when I started to hit an issue where the weight was plateauing, which could be for a week or two, right? And we're not seeing any change. Then I drop from four high days to then three low days. Okay, and you can see as one goes down, the other one is inversely uh, working here. So after that doesn't work, we go three high days, four low days. Then we have two high days and five low days. And that's where I'm at right now. So basically Monday through Friday are gonna be low days. And then I have Saturday and Sunday, which are gonna be higher days. And the reason we like those higher days is one, just mentally, I get a little bit of a break. I get to eat a little bit more food, uh, just give myself more energy. And then two, I just feel like I get a really good body uh, composition change from when I induce those calories back in just for those two days. Uh, for whatever the reason is, uh, I can't exactly say off the top of my head and I don't wanna say anything that's wrong, uh, but it's just been working for me. So something for you guys to play around with and see if that works for you as well. So you can see as the weeks went on, uh, the high days became less and the low days became higher. And that was all based on how my weight was trending. So right now I'm gonna ride it out the same exact way that I have been with the whole week being uh, low days and the weekend being high days. Now, when we get down to how the macros are used and, and portioned out throughout the meals of the day, um, basically protein is gonna be evenly distributed. So if you have 300 grams uh, of protein and you eat five meals a day, you need to get 60 grams of protein per meal. Okay, so that's what I do. I just take that number, divide it by however many meals I'm having, and, and that's how much protein gets involved with each and every meal. Now, when it comes to carbohydrates, I like to do this a little bit differently. Typically, I do 30% of my carbs pre-workout, 30% um, of my carbs post-workout. Now, in the beginning, I was doing a little bit of intra-carb while I was training, um, but since I'm really trying to get that peak physique on right now, I cut those intra out and I just have them post. Uh, but early on, if you guys want in your cut and you feel like you, you get some good energy or the training sessions are long, uh, you can have a little bit of intra-carb, but that can be kind of factored in. But basically, anytime pre-workout to when we're done, uh, we wanna get about 60% of our total carbs within that window, okay? And that just helps because like I said, carbohydrates are gonna be the primary uh, fuel source for uh, anaerobic training. So we wanna utilize them around the time of training and kind of just help replenish the muscle as well as the energy. So that's for carbs. Now for fats, typically I avoid fats around training. The reason is it just slowers digestion down. Uh, so if you train in the morning, you may wanna just avoid uh, taking in a lot of fats. I think anywhere from five, 10 grams of fat is okay. Anything more than that, it just becomes longer to digest and we wanna get that fuel to the muscle as fast as possible. So for me, typically I wake up, I have my meal and I was actually having anywhere from five to 10 grams of fat because I wasn't training until the afternoon. Uh, but the meal pre-training, basically no fats, um, no fats during training and then no fats after training. And then I'll sprinkle my fats in throughout the rest of the day after that post-training meal. So most of my fats are actually gonna come later on in the day, but schedule that with however works for your schedule, okay? So uh, if you're training in the morning, avoid fat stem. If you're training at night, avoid fat stem and you know make it work for you. Uh, I was also, like I said, just weighing myself three to five times per week. Um, so you wanna make sure that you develop a healthy relationship with the scale and you have to understand that weight will fluctuate depending on water and sodium. So you could see some days that are, are high consistently and then it drops. Um, but as well as you're getting the average picture and you know it, it's changing in the, the way that you want it to, you know that's fine. So for me, I found three to five times uh, per week of we me weighing myself uh, work best for me. I have a fine relationship with the scale, I understand uh, nutrition and science pretty well. So obviously if I'm taking in a lot of sodium, drinking a lot of water, I may have a couple of days that are a little bit higher, but then usually as long as I'm sticking to what is exactly going on with the macros, that weight over time will start dropping. Uh, so I don't worry about it too much. And then, like I said, I have typically five or six meals per day. 
And the reason is when you're in a, a calorie deficit, it's I think more beneficial to have those meals uh, a little bit higher frequency just because you're uh, going to be able to eat more frequently and it just helps mentally. Uh, but if you can handle three meals a day, by all means, go for it. I just found that when I was doing breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I was pretty hungry between those meals. So by adding in you know, meals five or six, it just kind of helped mentally and with my satiation. So that's kind of the rough layout of what I did. It's pretty simple, guys. Um, and it's, it's been working. I started at 272 and I'm down to 248 uh, as of today. You know, uh, I, I don't know if you guys can see, but I'm pretty vascular. You know, my abs, I have a six pack and, and all that good stuff and just kind of trim it up. You can definitely tell in the face and I'm leaning out and uh, I'll show you guys the final, you know, progress coming up soon within the video and we'll talk all, a little bit more about that journey. But uh, some, some stages that I went through that really helped me uh, is as I started reducing my calories more, satiation became a, a big factor for me. So I used to eat a lot of rice, uh, but if you compare rice to something like potatoes, say I have 10 ounces of rice. So say 10 ounces of rice equates to roughly 100 to 120 grams of carbs. Well, 10 ounces of potatoes is only 55 grams of carbs. So I'm not really damaging my uh, carbs bad uh, by switching to something like potatoes and I can eat more of them to satiate me. All right. So say I still did want hundred grams of carbs from potatoes. It would be twice as much as it would be with the rice. So if you're someone who needs to satiate yourself more, making that switch from going from rice to potatoes was big for me. So I'm a huge sweet potato fan. I was doing some white potatoes, uh, some red potatoes and different potato medleys. And uh, that, that kind of saved me. And it became a lot easier for me to you know, get a good amount of food in while also staying on my macros. Uh, early on, when it came to things like fats, so I told you my fats were kind of going over, it was like these little random things uh, like butter that I was using in the pan or when I was sauteing my vegetables, the oil I was using, those, uh, you know, little bit of fats added up and got me over 50 pretty fast. So I switched things up from instead of sauteing in oil, I started steaming all my vegetables. So just using water to steam them saves you calories and it, it still tastes great. Um, and then when I would use eggs, right, there's a good amount of fat in eggs. So I started using tons of egg whites uh, and basically I don't really use any whole eggs, maybe one or two here or there, uh, but that kind of helped keep my fats a lot lower. And then uh, a big one for me has been drinking uh, creamer with my coffee. Now, when I'm massing, I just drink regular creamer. Um, but, you know, when I'm cutting, I switch to the fat-free creamer, okay? So uh, that's been a game changer for me. So I can still mentally get my creamer with my coffee. At the same time, it's not, you know, sacrificing my calories uh, or, you know, increasing my fats to a point where it's screwing me up. So... That helped, and then honestly, the last five weeks, I've just been doing black coffee, and this kind of has been, a, like I said, progressional. So if I have 15 weeks, I can kind of say like, okay, weeks one through five, I'm gonna drink regular creamer, uh, but maybe just not as much. Then weeks you know, six through 10, I'm gonna go fat-free creamer. Uh, and then the last five weeks, I'm gonna have no creamer. Um, but having that time has allowed me to mentally process what I need to do and feel confident about it because I'm also seeing the results. And that's the cool thing about this, guys. When you start seeing and feeling those results, like I got chills just thinking about it. You can actually see you got chill bumps. That's how passionate I am about this stuff. Uh, it just makes it so much easier, but a lot of people don't get there. So you have to just structure it and stick to the plan. And once you start feeling the results and, and more so seeing the results, it makes a lot of this stuff a lot easier and you get excited about it. And it just makes the journey just so much uh, better to enjoy. Uh, so... That's been a cool one. Uh, the other thing is I switched to diet drinks, all right? So I drink, if I wanna have some, some like something like a soda, I drink a diet soda, uh, or I just go the sugar-free, you know, fat-free version of things, and it allows me to stay within this window. So as you can see, my maintenance probably would have been a right rate around uh, like 4,000 calories, um, but we dropped it a little bit to 3,600 right around there, and then on my low days, we're right about 28, 50. So that's kind of where I'm at throughout the entire week uh, to progressively lose weight over time. So that is what Coach Joe had done to become a shredded dice up machine. It's very simple. Uh, and I like to just, you know, utilize science and the principle science gives me and then just put my hard work behind it. And I think if you guys 
uh, do that as well. You can use the same principles I use here, but just kind of figure out the numbers that work best for you. And you guys will be kicking ass and taking names. One thing I just wanted to recommend you guys uh, that I just thought about was protein. Okay, typically with protein, you wanna be over uh, one gram per pound of body weight. So that's why I'm at 300. So if I weigh maybe 270 when I started, you know, 300 is just a nice easy number to hit. And the main reason we wanna keep our protein higher is just to maintain uh, as much muscle as possible. Now, could it be a little bit lower? Sure, it could probably be around 285. Uh, you know, but 300 was just easy for me and I was still losing weight. So wasn't much of a calorie problem there. Um, you know, but if you don't need those extra calories and you feel like you're keeping, your, you know, your muscle mass, that's awesome. But rule of thumb will be one gram per pound of body weight. And then for me, like I said, uh, the game changer was just dropping my fats a little bit lower than I normally have in the past to allow myself more carbs, uh, specifically for training. But that is pretty much it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned some things and kind of took some pointers over this. Pretty basic. I actually like educating. I like the whiteboard talk. If you guys have more questions, you can drop them down below. Um, but like I said, there's different ways to skin a cat. You know, if doing intermittent fasting works for you, awesome, go for it. If you like keto, fantastic, go for it. Are, are there better ways to do things? Yeah, sure. But at the end of the day, it comes down to what works for you, what's gonna keep you compliant, and what's gonna get you the result that you want at the end. Uh, so, guys, all I ask is you head over to Facebook, go into the search bar, type The Iron Lions, join our Facebook group. Uh, you just get accepted, there's form checks, there's articles. Uh, conversational stuff going on in there. It's just a hub for like-minded individuals uh, who are down with strength training, nutrition, just bettering yourself as an individual. Uh, and also, if you are looking for programming, I highly recommend doing the hypertrophy program when you are in a cut, just because it is higher volume, a little bit more frequency, it's gonna help preserve muscle. That's on zatstrength.net, uh, along with a lot of other templates, custom programming, etc. And then, uh, as always, guys, I am an HD Muscle Sponsor Athlete. You can go to HD Muscle. You can type in Zat Strength for your code. Save some money. I love supplements. I've been using, uh, especially during this, the protein has helped a lot. Uh, the EAAs and what else? Uh, the carbs. So that's kind of what I use early on. But I'm always using the protein. It's just an easy way to get protein in. But that's it, guys. So uh, until then, guys, stay a lean, mean, strength machine. Get shredded as heck. Look amazing. And uh, can't wait to hear about your guys' journey. So thank you so much. Peace.